All right. So thanks everyone for joining in. My name is Nick. As you all know, we have been uh, we have we have met across last week a couple of times. Today it's the third session, and we're going to begin across this session, guys, by doing a small recap. Thanks, Vijay, for letting me know that this is your first class, and we've got Mamta also joining in. Welcome to the session, Mamta. The way it's going to work across is that I'm going to be putting across everybody on mute. And I would be on the unmute mode, guys. I'll be speaking across. The reason why we do that is just because we want to make sure there is no background noise and everybody is able to take the training perfectly without any background noise being there. What we will do, we'll start today's session, guys, by talking about, by first discussing and talking about whatever we have discussed and understood and learned in the last uh, session, guys, okay, last week, so that it, uh, there is a recap. There's a recap and we are able to uh, get to understand that what we performed, what we did, and uh, we'll move forward with that. Now, uh, Goresh was here last week. Vijay, it's first time for you. Mamta, you've been taking sessions with me, so it's not first time for you as well. And so I do not need to go ahead and much, talk much about myself, which I can let you know I'm a digital marketing trainer. In case you want to know more about me in detail, you can anytime go to linkedin.com and type in my name which is Nick Bartley, and you can get to know more about me. So I've been into this profession for the past 17, 18 years and uh, have been taking care of the servicing side and also the uh, digital marketing training. Just to name a few of the organizations I'm working with as a trainer, it's Google, GoDaddy, Microsoft, and several others. Okay, so last time, guys, we started across with the basics of digital marketing. Okay, when I say basics of digital marketing, we understood what, uh, what does the term marketing means. Then we went ahead and we understood uh, what is digital marketing per se all about, right? Marketing is a bigger bandwagon altogether. And uh, one of the ways through which marketing is performed is digital. You, we do have the offline ways. We do have the online ways. We are focusing more on the online versions. And within the online, we went ahead, guys. And uh, last time we understood that there are several channels which people uh, go ahead and perform, you know, several channels where people go ahead and spend in time in the internet space if we look at from the internet consumption uh, wise you know from the consumption point of view whenever we go on to internet either we are on the social media websites or we spend time on emails we spend time on uh, search engines and several other third-party websites whether it's for fun entertainment news website or whether it's video share videos uh, we watch and several other things Keeping that in mind, we understood that there are several channels and we'll be taking each one of them one by one in terms of uh, understanding these channels from the marketer's perspective, right? We'll be changing across our roles, guys, when we will be understanding these stuff. When I say roles changing, it would be like some at certain intervals, I'll ask you to get into the shoes of an internet searcher, right? Somebody who goes on to the internet and tries to do some or the uh, something or the other uh, whether it's to do with searching on the internet on a search engine or performing any action on a social media website and so forth. This is one player. The other player, when I keep, uh, which I take example on most of the scenarios is the advertiser. At many instances, I'll keep on asking you to think like uh, as an advertiser, as a marketer, get into the shoes of a marketer and try to understand what does the marketer really want? What is the overall purpose behind getting into uh, you know, the internet space and uh, working around these platforms, right? And plus, I'll also keep on asking you to change your position as a third player, which is, let's say, Google or any other player or any other website owner, right? A third party website owner. With that being said, the introduction part was being covered. We understood that there are several uh, opportunities within the digital marketing. There are several channels. There are the, the kind of scope which it has. I mean, you can always go to job portal like knockery.com and so forth where you can find what's the kind of scope we discussed all that in detail you guys have the recordings with you you can anytime uh, access them and even today's session is getting recorded you will have the access to this also then the point number three uh sorry the next point rather i would not say uh, point number three it's uh, after the introduction and the scope yes it's point number three we started with each and every module the first module which we took to understand the digital marketing side guys is the search engine optimization. When I say search engine optimization, this is one of the ways through which we get across uh, traffic on the website. 
also would like to tell you, I'm so sorry, before SEO, we understood the website making process. If you guys remember, Goresh was part of it, Mamta, you were part of it. We understood how we uh, go ahead and create across a website in a very non-technical manner. This was covered across again last Saturday, guys. I can go ahead and quickly do a recap for that as well by just uh, opening across that document. I made each one of you understand that for going ahead and promoting across your business or someone else business onto internet, you do need a web presence, right? You do need a web presence, which comes across with the help of a website. Basically you can anytime go ahead and create a web presence with the help of a social media website. For example, having a Facebook page or having a YouTube channel, these are good, but that is not sufficient in terms of promoting yourself. If you really want to go ahead and full heartedly, uh, you know, uh, create an impact into the minds of your customer, just having social media presence and not having a website is not the right approach. Best approach is to first of all, have a website and website, which is, uh, which is responsive to all the major devices, which are used across in today's world, whether it's a tablet or a, a mobile or a laptop and so forth. With that being said, we started with understanding how do we create across a responsive website? Then I went ahead and uh, told each one of you that in order to create across our website, which is in a non-technical manner, we will be using across a technology guys. And that is called CMS content management system. There are several content management system uh, platforms which are available across in the industry. And uh, the names of some of them are like open card, Zoomla, Magento, Drupal, etc. So if you are hearing these names for the first time, let me tell you, don't think that there is something technical which is being spoken about. These are just the names of certain platforms, certain common CMS. That's what it said. As the name says content management system, these platform helps us to go ahead and manage across our website in the most appropriate manner, whether it's to do with the content on our website, whether it's to do with the images, videos, the menu bars and several or the form fill ups and so forth. Everything which is there on the website can be managed in a very effective fashion, efficient fashion, and in a non-technical manner with the help of CMS. So we took uh, WordPress as the platform. We, we decided to take this uh, platform and uh, start working on it. And we understood that in order to create across a WordPress based website or whatever, whatever website it would be, we do need several raw materials to actually get that created. Number one is the domain guys. So domain is the name. And uh, we understood that domain after buying across a domain, we start with the, uh, you know, we, we need to buy across hosting server. So I'm going a bit faster. We understood several other things. I'm just doing a recap in another 10 minutes, guys. We buy, we have to buy hosting. We understood this. We understood how do we connect hosting with domain that was also being covered last time. Then we understood how do we control or, you know, get the C panel up with the C panel. We, how do we, install WordPress and once WordPress installed through this fashion, we go ahead and uh, start with logging into the WordPress panel. Once we log in into the WordPress panel, how do we make sure that the design is set up for that same? All right. So the design of the template, basically we have to buy across a paid theme. I showed across the example of several paid themes, which are there on a website like theme forest. I showed that. And once you buy from there, then you, how do you really go ahead and upload that paid theme? Right, you upload that paid theme into the WordPress panel by going into the appearance section and then underneath appearance, it's the themes. Once that's been done, you go to the theme section, you click on to add new and you'll be able to add across the theme guys. And once the theme is up, you are good to go. You're, get, you're, you're uh, good to go ahead and start editing across the existing pages, which would be there, right? So there would be dummy content, which you can anytime go ahead and change. Then I uh, also went ahead and started with the search engine optimization process guys the search engine optimization being the number one so once your website is ready it's all about going ahead and promoting across your website guys it's all about going ahead and promoting across your website to the audience who are your potential audience right to that audience who are i mean who are potential who could really get converted okay now the audience which will get converted are going to be the one who will be seeking in people like you the way they will seek people like you is first of all uh, going to be with the help of search engine, like I said, and we understood that whenever somebody uses across a search engine, uh, he or she types in across a search query. So I took an example last time that somebody who's looking to buy across an iPhone for himself or herself would type in the search query 
in the search engine bar and over here there are several search results the number one onto the top are called the image ads guys the way i'm calling them ads is sponsored it's written over here and then we have got the search ad search text ad over here then we go further down these were the things guys which we started with and i'm just going to go ahead and mute everyone all right right so we started okay i've just muted everyone so it, the way it works is that i would be on the speaking mode guys and you can type in whenever you have a question so we understood how do we get across our website onto the top we started with the search engine optimization process and in the search engine optimization process guys this were the step these are the steps which we spoke about last time whenever you have any questions do let me know you guys have the recordings also for the last two sessions we started with requirement gathering and the requirement gathering process happens through SEO questionnaire. Each one of you would have received across the documents and the links and so forth. Then comes in the SEO audit. I asked you that the SEO audit process help happens when you are through, when you are actually, uh, you know, when you have understood the entire on page and off page. Okay. So I'd asked each one of you to actually skip this portion as of now, because you will be able to understand the SEO audit process once you're done with the on page. Then we started with keyword analysis, guys. Okay, SEO questionnaire requirement gathering is a pretty simple process where you ask the right set of questions to your audience. Keyword analysis, we understood how do we, I mean, it's, it's a process of getting to know the right set of search queries which our audience, majority of our audience are typing in. It makes sense to be in front of our potential audience. And in order to be in front of the potential audience, the idea is to get the list of those keywords only, those words only, which are end audiences typing in all right so that's what we understood we understood this uh, keyword analysis process with the help of the keyword planner tool we went ahead and did an activity where we understood that there are three factors like relevancy average monthly searches and competition we looked at then we did the keyword mapping process and also again this was being covered across we understood how do we create across the meta i mean map across the keywords the the set of keywords guys which is meta keywords and focus keyword all right this is all was being done then we started with on page guys just help uh, let me know till what point uh, did we cover it across so goresh you were part of the last session if you can let me know till what point did we uh, we were done were we done with the title meta and also were we done with uh, what do you say the overall inputs the overall pointers which we need to keep in mind while creating across these tags were we done with that? That character limits and having, did we start with URL naming? Just trying to check with you. It's just that I take, all right, so URL has to be started. I'll just go ahead and unmute you if you want to uh, speak further. All right. Goresh, uh, do we have to start with URL naming? Because it, I take several sessions. That's why I'm not able to recall <laughs> till what point did I, uh, you know, I, I took the entire curriculum. Right. Goresh, I have unmuted you if you want to speak. Uh, just wait. Okay, so no problem. Yeah. All right, so we have Prasenjit, Prasenjit also over here. So on page is what I recall definitely we started with. URL naming done. URL naming is done, right. Okay, so you're uh, referring your notes yeah. and alternative text and alt tags we spoke about. The header tags, keyword density. Yeah, density is done. Perfect. And sitemap, did we understood what exactly sitemap is and so forth? Yeah. Perfect. Sitemap was being covered. All right, so I think we have to start with off page. Got you. All right. Yeah, we, we are supposed to start with off page optimization. Perfect. Thanks, Goresh. I'll just go ahead and mute you. Thanks so much for your support. All right, guys, so we were done with the on-page optimization last Saturday 
and Sunday. Now, when we talk about off-page, guys, I did make you understand that off-page optimization consists of all the activities which are done outside of the website, where all the activities, in other words, I will say activities which are done outside of the website, where we are not touching our website at all. All right. Or the other names which are given across to off-page optimization, guys, is backlink building, link building, or creation of creation of inbound links. Now, just try to keep a note of it that the other names which are given across to off-page optimization, guys, is called backlink building, link building, or creation of inbound links. Now, many people in the industry might say, "How many inbound links have you created?" Okay, I'll just make you understand the difference between inbound link and an outbound link, guys. But off-page optimization is all about inbound link. There is uh, this funda over here with off-page optimization, which says that the popularity—it's basically dependent upon the popularity, how popular you are. What search engines does? They look at they look at uh, the popularity aspect of your website. On-page is something which was a relevancy part, right? Where the content of the website is looked at, the tags and so forth. When I talk about popularity, it is to do with the number of websites which are giving a link to you, the number of other third-party websites, not your website, other websites which are which are going ahead and pointing out a link from their website to yours. Let me just show you and give you an example. So let's say I will take a cross example of let's say this website called uh, Snapdeal. Okay, now with Snapdeal. Most of you are aware of that Snapdeal is an e-commerce website, all right. Or I can take across Amazon also as an example. Let's let's take that as an because it would be easier for people all across the globe. Amazon is a global brand. If I talk about Amazon, guys, how Amazon would have got connected or how Amazon would have got links is uh, I would I have an access to a tool, guys, and that tool is called Open Site Explorer. Okay. This tool helps me. I'm just letting you know what is this tool all about. This is used for the purpose of off-page. If I am getting to understand how is my website standing right now in terms of off-page, this tool helps me. Okay, I'm just uh, copying across this URL and I'm pasting it in the chat window so that each one of you have the access to the same. Somehow it didn't open up. Give me a second. All right. Okay, seems like the, uh, it is taking time. Now, meanwhile, it opens up. It is not, it's taking too long to respond. Once again, so let me just use, so this is the URL, exact URL for this. Okay, you can just uh, ignore that URL, guys. It's one and the same thing. OpenSide Explorer, as you can see, it's right over here. This is owned by moz.com. Moz guys is the number one player in the search engine optimization industry. Wherever somebody has to get across an understanding of what's happening in the SEO industry, they refer to Moz because Moz are the pioneers. Now, as you can see, this tool is saying develop a high quality inbound link profile. Let's type in across Amazon's URL over here and we'll get to know from what all websites Amazon is getting across backlink. All right. I'll talk about what does this domain authority page authority really means. I'm going further down. And as you can see, these are the links guys, which are of third party websites. Okay. From where Amazon is getting across backlink. I'm going further down and let's say this one, I'm taking across this as an example. Okay. I can take any one of those and just to make it simple, I'm taking across two or three URLs guys as of now. All right, and now I'll be showing you the kind of off-page optimization or backlinking basically Amazon has done. These websites which you're seeing over here, you know, which you're seeing right over here, which is like IAMI.in, I believe there's no video lag and you guys can see. It's IAMI.in or there is comparindia.news18.com. I hope you guys are able to see that. 
or the website, the link, which is the nextweb.com forward slash mobile and so forth. All of these links which are shown over here, I hope each one of you can see that. Just trying to check, guys, if you are able to see the video, if there is no video lag. Can you confirm me in the chat window if it's working fine and you guys are able to see what I'm saying? The audio and the video is getting synced. Is it fine, Goresh, Prasenjit, and Vijay? Are my words matching the video? Prasenjit says, I'm trying. All right, Vijay, thanks. Okay. And Goresh, I believe it's, it's matching up, right? So as you can see, so bbc.co.uk, techniasia.com. I mean, these are the URLs which are right in front of me. And I believe each one of you can also see these links. See these links. I mean, the same thing which I'm talking right now. Now I'm opening across one of the website guys, as you can see, BBC right over here, one of the links which I saw were there. Now in this particular web page, guys, somewhere or the other, there would be a linkable text, okay, which will be pointing across to Amazon.in. I'm just trying to see if I can find it easily. Uh, not really. I cannot find, all right, so it's jungled. Okay, here it is. Amazon India. Can you guys see this text, guys, which is linkable and it's Amazon India? Goresh, Prasenjit, and Vijay. Are you able to see this link on bbc.com? Perfect. Thanks, Goresh, for acknowledging. And I'm assuming Prasenjit and Vijay can also hear this, uh, can see this perfect stuff. Now, with that being said, what has happened over here? Amazon has got a backlink, guys, from bbc.com. Amazon India to be precise. In other words, bbc.com is giving across a vote. You know, it is giving across a backlink or it is giving across a vote to Amazon. I can go ahead and take across my document and just type in across the same wording which I'm saying in the internet marketing industry. All right, Prasenji says, I have browsing this page but did not understand where to go. Kindly guide once more. Sure. I'll just talk about that. So this is, this process is also called getting votes for your website. All right, so if you'll try doing those things right with me, it might take uh, a lot of time. So you can always refer to the recording to actually per, you know pursue these tasks, but let me just go ahead and show you the Open Site Explorer once again. Here you go, you have to proceed type in across the URL onto the top. Let's type in Amazon.in in the URL section. So like I said, you can try doing this right now, but my recommendation is to try these things later on, later on at your own ease, at your own comfort level uh, by looking at the recording also. And uh, you can just have a look at what I'm doing right now so that you don't miss out on something, right? So I don't want you to miss out on something. So here you got the links, the inbound links basically, mm -hmm. and the inbound links when I showed you the BBC link. And there are several links over here. I gave you one of the example of the BBC one. Right? When I went to the BBC, this particular link, the website which opened up is this one, and there was a link, guys. There was a clickable text basically, which had a, uh, you know, which is pointing out to some other website. When I click onto this in a new tab, you will see Amazon.in opening up. So this is the new tab, guys. And as you can see, it's Amazon.in. Amazon so Amazon is getting across a backlink, guys. Amazon is getting a backlink. And from which website? It's BBC. Now, another concept which I want to tell you, another few things, terminologies which I used across in the internet marketing world, guys, is that the text which is clickable over here, the text is Amazon and India. It is clickable. Even if you go underneath, you can see another text which is clickable that says jungly.com, another text which is Amazon Press. All the text which is clickable, there is a name given to that text and that's called anchor text. Anchor text, that's it. I mean, it's just a, a small, simple terminology which I'm trying to tell you. A text which is clickable, guys, that's called an anchor text. This is pretty much important to know. 
Now, this entire process of getting across backlink guys uh, for your website is one of the key core area of your search engine optimization campaign. I've got a question over here, which is, says, we have to link all these sites to our domain or we have to give for third party. All right, so what happens is Vijay, these backlinks which we have to get across for our website, we have to approach the third party websites. In this example of ours, what Amazon would have done, Amazon would have approached BBC, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, Amazon would have approached BBC and several other websites like BBC, which are, uh, which they feel, which Amazon feel that these are the great websites and it makes a lot of sense to get across a backlink to them. Now then things won't happen like this. When once the talk would have happened between Amazon and BBC, there could have been several factors on the basis of which this deal could have got done where BBC would have agreed, right, to get across a backlink. Sometimes BBC on their own willingness would have given across a backlink. Sometimes it's just a conversation. Sometimes there is a transaction. Sometimes there is a barter system, which I'll talk all about that. So this linking guys uh, would not have been so easy. I mean, it's not the hand of uh, the website owner. The website owner, if I talk about over here, it's Amazon. If Amazon is doing search engine optimization, it's not in the hand of Amazon's website owner or the Amazon search engine optimizer to go ahead and put across their website link on any or the other website. Gone are those days when, you know, those spammy ways of generating backlinks were being uh, done. I'm not teaching you that, but the spammy way was actually done in a process where you just have to go ahead and submit across your website in several other websites, several other directories, forums, and blogs. Those are not at all recommended now. The ways you go ahead and get across these backlinks, I'm just going to speak about that. And I'm just trying to read your question again, Vijay. You say, we have to link all these sites to our domain or we have to give for third party. We have to get across backlinks from all these third party websites to our, that's what we really do. Makes sense. I uh, Let me know if in case the question, if you, are, if you have a follow up question, Vijay, you can anytime go ahead and type that across. The backlink checker tool I have already told you. And this is all about getting popularity. This, this entire mechanism is called getting uh, votes for your, pop, uh, for your website or popularity, you can say. Okay, this is purely popularity. Or I can say, this is purely word of mouth advertising, guys. It is word of mouth. If people are talking about you, definitely off-page optimization is getting done. But not just talking, but it is, has to be coupled up with the backlink. It has to be coupled up with the backlink in the sense that till the time you're not uh, getting a link from the text which people are typing on their website, the off page is not complete. Now, in these five major steps, I have written across the ways backlinks have to be generated, guys. I am pointing out again, gone are those days, three, four years back, uh, you know, these things really got changed in the SEO industry where the backlinking process, which was used earlier, is no more used now. The earlier days of search engine optimization involved across getting backlinks from websites like directory submission, where people used to go ahead and you know, submit across backlink uh, their websites on uh, directories, uh, business directories. In India, you've got uh, popular directories, business websites, business directories like India Mart, Just Dial, and so forth. Uh, it's not recommended to go ahead and do all of those. I mean, uh, you know, you are simply going ahead and pushing across, pushing across the uh, search engine to, you know, uh, take you, uh, you know, take you as a great website, consider your website as a great website and so forth. At the end of the day, search engines have stopped taking uh, directories as one of the factors. Forums, people used to go ahead and spam across uh, forums, blogs, blog commenting, or people used to go ahead and uh, spam across their website link onto social media websites as well. But that's not the case. You know, people used to go ahead and take their website link and put in across into various Facebook groups and so forth. That is absolutely not the right thing to do. These days, searching is going to de rank your website, they punish you, 
and uh, take away your search engine rankings if you're ranking good right now. The best way to get across backlink guys is by getting them done organically. Organically in the sense, if you are doing something great, people will go ahead and feature you on your own. All right. Or there are some other smart techniques which you can do. Let me tell you that. The smart technique like guys is all about going ahead and, going ahead and networking with people. Now networking can happen at two levels. Either you do networking in the offline world, in the offline world in the sense like you attend certain seminars, workshops, networking events, trade shows where you meet new people and these people whom you meet, let's say if they've got websites which are related to your website also, related to your industry, you can have a conversation with them. Let them know that you are in the process of optimizing your website. Maybe they might be also doing the same, right? You can anytime have a, a sort of a deal where uh, you can do a barter where you say barter in the sense that you can offer them content and ask for backlink in return, or you can offer them, let's say, uh, something else, which is, let's say any of your product and you offer them discount and they give you a backlink in return. These are the kind of things guys, which usually happen across these days in terms of getting backlinks. And if you're doing across backlinking off page optimization in a old school way, just get ready to get your website banned and so forth, which we do not want at all. All right, barter system, I already told you that you give content or you give uh, discounts on your, or, or the discounts on the products which you offer. And so forth, and then you ask for, and you get across a backing in return. So in this example, if I talk about, let's say BBC, there might be a deal where BBC would have BBC employees, let's say, get across a certain percentage of a certain percentage of a certain coupons and so forth. Then BBC in return is giving across a backlink, guys, in one of its related, uh, what do you say, page. As you can see, the page from where the backlink BBC is giving across is not the home page, guys. It's one of the internal page of BBC. It's the business page. And within the business, it could be another page and so forth. Here, there is a content related to uh, online retailing and so forth. All right, it's purely about Amazon. So there could be a, you know, a good deal which Amazon must have struck with BBC. Then there are various th ways through which these backlinks get done, guys. Let's say if you are a bigger brand, bigger brand in the sense like, I mean, this example of Amazon is a, uh, is, suits well with this. If you are doing something great in your industry, let's say you're Amazon only and you have up, come up with something great, people want to showcase and talk about you in their website. Because at the end of the day, these news websites or any other third party websites, at the end of the day, they do want content on regular basis, on daily basis. Now, where will they really get across uh, content from? I mean, they have several sources. When they'll find out that, okay, Amazon, which is a bigger brand, has come up with something new in there. Uh, they have a... Uh, come up with something new in, on their website, they would like to go ahead and put that, put that piece of content or that piece of news on their own. There is no barter then involved in that case, right? Either you are a big brand and people want to write about you, you have come up with something great, people want to write about you. Or a fourth situation, guys, when this backlinking procedure happens is when you have a financial transaction also. There can be a situation where BBC and... Uh, Amazon would could have had a financial transaction where Amazon is the pay. Amazon would have Amazon is getting across the benefit, which is the backlink. So Amazon might have said, "Okay, I'll pay you thousand dollars for a link, or two hundred dollars, or one hundred dollars." I'm just giving an example. I mean, do not go with my words that it's thousand dollars, or five hundred dollars, or one hundred dollar. It can be fifty dollars also. It can be ten dollars also. Usually, these kind of backlinking purchases is okay, but uh, there are several players in the industry, guys, who claim that we'll give you these many backlinks, thousands of backlinks for $10 and $5, never go with them. Those are black hat because they will do what they will do. They create across a bot. A bot is just a program which will automatically keep submitting backlinks on several other websites, which, and these websites, the kind of websites they will post are absolutely not uh, worth it. You know, when you are, getting a backlink when you are getting into the process of getting backlinks from third party websites, you have to make sure that the websites which are giving you backlink guys are related to your business. Number one. And if they are not related, they have to be generic. It should not be unrelated business. 
So if I'm Amazon and I'm getting across a backlink from a real estate website, it's absolutely not worth it. BBC is absolutely okay because BBC is generic. It's a news portal and news portal can talk about anything or everything, right? But getting a backlink from an interior designing or a real estate website for Amazon it doesn't really make sense. And that should be avoided. That should be avoided. All right. And uh, Prasenjit says, how do we confirm it? I'm sorry, how do we confirm in the sense like if somebody has given us a back thing, then how do we confirm that? Is that your question? Like, uh, just want to know in detail, like. All right. So if somebody has get a, a, a given across a backlink, the way we get to know whether that backlink uh, is confirmed, I mean, uh, search engines are taking that into consideration is with the help of this particular tool only, the backlink checker tool. Once the backlink has been created, Prasenjit, we can go ahead and type in across the, our website URL. And as you can see, there are so many backlinks which I've got. So there are like 158,000 backlinks. I'm using across the free version of this tool. In the paid version, you can go ahead and simply uh, export this entire list, export this in an Excel sheet. And then once you have exported, you can type in, a, you can just search you can search for that website for, for, you know, from which you want to just confirm it. That's the only way. That's how you really confirm whether you, the backlink you have, uh, you're looking for is taken into consideration by search engine is there or not. All right. Any other question, guys, feel free to put that across in the chat window so that I can go ahead and uh, write that across. Now, the other way to attract across a backlink, guys, is to create good link worthy content. Now link worthy content. If I talk about, this is a term used across for amazing content, which you write across on your website. When you write across amazing content on your website, people will come. Other website owners will come, they'll read and they'll find, and let's say they find across the content to be very much interesting. They, when they find the content to be interesting and worth, worth it, they might go ahead and put in a request to you. Okay. Let's say for an example, if I'm Amazon and I've got great content onto my Amazon blog, the blog post is so exciting that other websites want to go ahead and take that same content and paste it on their website. For that, they will, uh, you know, this other third party website will approach us. We are Amazon will go ahead and email us saying that we do need a permission from you to take content on, uh, you know, they take this content, which is on your website and paste it on our website. You go ahead and get into a situation where, uh, you know, you can, you can let them know, okay, we are ready to give you the content provided you give us credits and within the credit in the footer section, give us a backlink or back, backlink maybe in the between, in the between of the content. So these are some, uh, organic ways, some right approaches of getting backlink guys. Otherwise the non-organic ones are pretty huge. I mean, they are pretty huge and they are not at all recommended at this given point of time. You'll find several digital marketers using those approach still now, and those are not recommended. This is the hard way. This is the tough way. This is a way of, uh, you know, through which it will take a lot of time for you to get across uh, things working. Uh, it's a time taking process, but trust me, there is no, uh, I mean, you are not leaving any stone unturned for getting across your website, uh, you know, in the back, what do you say? The black hat stuff and getting your website punished or penalized. Every activity, if you are doing related to this is always going to get across your website in the white hat, in the legal way. All right. Your website would be doing across well, if you'll perform these actions else, uh, there are higher chances. There's a higher risk of getting your website banned or deranged deranked in the sense that it's ranking well right now. And if you start performing the other stupid ways, the other old school methods of backlinking, your website ranking will keep falling down. Makes sense. Now the, the time which I took in order to explain off page guys was very less, but the time which is taken across in order to do this approach, which is approaching people, networking, calling them up, uh, sending them email, doing a conversation, getting into, uh, you know, this negotiation phase that all takes a lot of time. You do need full time resources. You do need, uh, you know, uh, you know, do need a lot of time to be invested into this. 
more than on page off page optimization takes more time uh, but when i was training but i'm when i'm training you off page took lesser time because there is not much of a technical stuff guys which we have to keep in mind only thing which we have to keep in mind is that the kind of websites which are giving you backlink has to be from a similar industry or from a generic way okay and this uh, process of getting backlinks to your website is called inbound links so there was an inbound link which we saw just now coming across from bbc to our website okay from to our website our website was amazon in that example so amazon is getting a backlink amazon is getting a inbound link so amazon is getting inbound link from bbc had it been the other way that there is content on amazon and uh, within the content there is a backlink there is a link which is going to a third party website outside that would be an external or an outbound link i hope i'm making sense guys inbound link and outbound link this is an example of inbound link for amazon because somebody clicks onto this amazon opens up now if there is a link on amazon and somebody clicks onto that link and goes to a third party website that will be an outbound link for amazon and inbound for that third party website right because that website is getting across a backlink make sense guys let me know if in case everybody is clear can i get a quick confirmation if you guys are clear on the stuff which we have spoken so far are you clear with the moz tool are you clear with all the things which we have understood perfect thanks koresh for acknowledging can i get prasenjit vijay are you guys clear thanks prasenjit and thank you vijay for letting me know all right so i'm moving further anchor text is something which i've already told you text which is made clickable is called an anchor text guys okay now the next thing guys okay no follow i'll talk about later i have to okay there is this example guys of backlink sellers like i told you which should be avoided there's an example these backlink sellers are absolutely good for nothing they are only good if you want your website to be deranked to be banned across and so forth they i mean these are uh, these are the ways of getting across your website ranked across faster but in future you cannot expect your website to be up for longer period of time now this is a kind of a backlink seller guys example of a backlink seller which is linksmanagement.com let me share across the url guys over here all right so you'll get that across in your chat window now one second all right so i've shared in the chat window i believe oh no it hasn't gone give me a second what's happening all right so when i press enter it's not going across this is crazy one second guys the chat is somehow not working all right so as you can see in the chat guys there is this link of the backlink checkers which i have shared with you these kind of uh, sorry back not backlink checker the backlink sellers these kind of backlink sellers should be avoided as you can see they're saying but $9 we'll give you this much and so forth never ever so it says we have reached 800000 backlinks these guys are just manipulating the search engine algorithm and that's what search engines have started identifying and they don't want search engines don't want such kind of manipulation to be there now the other thing guys which i have to talk about which we just skipped for a while that's called domain authority and page authority now these are two matrices guys domain authority and page authority two matrices which have to be kept across in mind one second give me a second guys all right so just one second this tool is giving me a tough time and 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 here you go okay so domain authority and page authority now these are the matrices guys which have to be used across mm. 
in situations in certain situations when we have to create backlinks when we have to decide on the backlink guys domain authority and page authority now as you can see these two matrices are first of all given across on a scale of 100 so it's always on a scale of 0 to 100 that's first thing which i wanted to let you know okay and the organization which is responsible the organization guys which is responsible for giving across these matrices is moz only okay da and pa first of all the very first thing which i have told you it's given on a scale of 0 to 100 this one and this one both and it's always given across when you type in across a url over here okay now on a scale of 100 it's been provided and it's only the moz organization which gives that and it's used across within the industry these days guys domain authority first of all is the score which is given across to the entire domain of your website now you would say how it is decided whether this is the score and so forth well these are the overall internal factors i mean these are there are certain factors which uh, moz takes into consideration in order to uh, judge how much score would that be and overall we can say the on page and the off page of our website off page techniques on page activities and off page activities which we do stronger they are the better domain authority and page authority we'll be having okay if the seo of our website or web pages in particular have been done perfectly now domain authority is something which is common for all the internal pages if i am go to amazon.in let's say uh, the internal page number one or the internal page number two of Amazon, every internal page of my Amazon website will have the same domain authority because it's given to the domain in total. But if I talk about page authority, it will differ from internal page one to internal page two to internal page three and so forth because every page individually have its own score also. And like I said, the way it's been determined by Moz is the overall on page and the off page activities which we have done for the entire website domain authorities for that and the entire on page and off page which is getting done for page authority uh, for every single page determines the page authority one another thing which i would like to tell you that in the example of that bbc what we saw that somebody who clicks onto this amazon india the amazon website was opening up right we saw that web bbc website is getting giving across a backlink to amazon I told you to notice that it was not the home page of BBC, it was the internal page, right? One of the internal pages of BBC, which was giving a backlink to Amazon home page. Now, even in this case, guys, it's not the Amazon, uh, what do you say? It's not necessary that the Amazon home page should only get across the backlink. There can be other internal pages also, which can get the backlink. So the internal page of a website A can give across a backlink to internal page of a website B. So any page of uh, others website can give me any uh, backlink to any other page of my website. So the backlinking process, the inbound link and the outbound link process is not restricted only to the home pages. It can be from an internal page to internal page. Make sense, right? I'm moving further guys. These are the important factors which have to be kept in mind. Now, with domain authority and page authority, where do we really implement? Where do we really see uh, you know, these matrices at what given instant, instance? Let's say we have a scenario, guys, as an off-page optimizer when we are working on our website and we're trying to get across backlinks. We have a scenario where we, we have got a uh, you know, choice to make in terms of backlinks to be taken. Choice in the sense we have got, let's say, two websites. You've got two websites to choose from uh, in order to get across a backlink. We get across in a situation like this. So if I'm being told, if I'm Amazon and I'm being told that, okay, you've got a website A and you've got a website B, you have to pick and choose uh, any one website out of these two in order to get across a backlink, then I'm not sure which one to choose from. I am going to go ahead and uh, you know, decide on that part by first of all, looking at the relevancy part. Out of those two websites from which I have to get across a backlink, which website, whether it's website A or website B, which is relevant to my business, okay? Uh, let's say if it's clear cut, define that website B is totally unrelated, my overall decision making becomes easy. I'm able to 
pinpoint on the website which is related to my business. It becomes easy. Now take another situation. Let's say the website A and website B both are related to my business and they both are popular or they both are non-popular, whatever it may be. Then in that case, we have to make a decision. So for that very purpose, we go to that Moz research, the Open Site Explorer research tool. We type in across the website A URL over here. And then we also type in across the website URL too in a different tab. We'll see domain authority for both the websites. The website, which is good in terms of the domain authority, which has got a higher domain authority, it's quite obvious. I'll go ahead and get across. I'll choose to get across a backlink from that popular website, from that website, which has a higher domain authority. Right. So these are the instances when do these factors, these measurement uh, stuff really comes into consideration, guys. All right. Hope it makes sense. That's about domain authority, page authority. I told you about the anchor text. So the text which is made clickable, right? The text on which the click link is there, that's called anchor text. All right. So I told you about that. And... No follow tag is not used across these days. These days, that's why I'm not showing you. That's more about off-page guys. Now there are other elements to search engine optimization, which I'm going to talk about now. And the number one is uh, after on-page and off-page guys is duplicate content. I just want a quick confirmation from each one of you. If you guys are good with all the on-page and off-page, which we have spoken about, on-page was covered across earlier last week. So it took us just one hour to go ahead and complete the off page. Like I said, off page is, uh, you know, there are very limited options. There are very limited options when we talk about off page these days. And I hope everybody's clear on that. If in case you have a question, feel free to put that across in the chat window. Are you all good? Shall I move ahead with the duplicate content guys? So I'll keep asking each one of you to put to let me know in the chat window if you are good and uh, if I can move on to the next topic of within search engine optimization that is duplicate content. All right, thanks Prasenji. Now what does the overall terminology duplicate content really means guys? What comes to your mind when we talk about duplicate content? Now this is also part of search engine optimization guys. What are those things which comes into your mind when I say duplicate content? Anyone who would like to give it a shot, give it a try. Uh, I'll wait. I think you guys must be typing in the chat window. So my question is, what do we mean by duplicate content or what comes to your mind? What is your understanding? How do you define duplicate content? I mean, if this is in generic sense, I would not say from the search engine optimization sense, I would talk, say. God, it says, I think it was done. Or is that so? Is duplicate content being done, guys? All right, Prasenjit says, Stealing from stealing from one side and pasted on the on side. Absolutely right, Prasenjit. Which is the same content which we are using for your website. Same thing can other people. Absolutely, absolutely right. Perfect. So we'll definitely talk more about duplicate. I believe that's uh, not being covered. You might have seen it somewhere else. So not a problem. When we say duplicate content, guys, duplicate content means. Stealing across definitely 
content from someone else website and pasting it across onto yours this is one way this is one of the duplicate content stuff the other thing about duplicate content is when you have similar content on two different web pages of your website so let's say you got a home page and you got a about us page in both the pages of your website you got similar content you know sometimes uh, without any intentions this kind of a this kind of a thing happens that you have same content on your two different web pages now search engines do not like this search engines do not like both these situations guys situation number 1 is when you have situation number 1 is when you have uh, got content on your website which is similar to someone else website content now no matter who has copied from whom both the websites are going to get impacted impacted negatively okay initially the website even if a particular website has created con unique content and their content has been stolen still search engines will go ahead and uh, you know put this thing into negative stuff uh, take a negative action against uh, both the websites and this is scenario 1 which is not liked by search engine scenario 2 all which is not liked by search engine is when there is duplicate content between two i mean on a page number 1 and a page number 2 of your same website all right so scenario 1 was when you have two different websites scenario 1 is within the same website two different web pages we'll talk both of bo about both of these one after another let's consider a situation number 1 where a website a all right a website a owner comes to your website and your website is website b let's say you are a content you have created unique content absolutely okay siteliner.com okay i think that was covered across correlation pretty smaller version i'll talk about this in detail right so got you right i think this was being asked by someone that's that's when i spoke about it okay i'll just i'll just be uh, quick in terms of that that's correct so in this case guys if somebody has come on to our website let me just take an example over here and then explain it further let's say i go on to okay i'm taking across example number 1 guys where two different websites have got similar content and your website content is being copied by someone else okay your website content the website content which you have created is pretty is absolutely unique you haven't gone ahead and uh, you know stolen across content from someone else website but there is a thief on the other side there is a thief on the other web side who has come to your website read the content which which is on your website and then they go ahead this other person who's who has copied who is who is stealing across copies the content and paste it across on his, his website this is purely a situation of stealing of content now the point is if there are going to be several people who will keep stealing content on your website on regular basis and you will also get negatively impacted which i said that in this kind of scenario despite of the fact that you haven't done anything wrong you were you were right on your part you did create across content uh, you know you did create across content uh, on your own it was unique content when it's unique content it means that you have to have uh, you have to actually go ahead and do another activity which is be attentive and stay on your toes you have to stay on your toes be attentive and need to know which all other websites are performing this wrong task of stealing your content and you have to stop them the way you stop them is with the help of an example with the help of a sorry tool called copyscape or siteliner there's another one so if you are doing your part number 1 correctly that you are creating unique content and you are posting it on your website that is not the end of the story you have to make someone in your team in your rest of your team to be responsible for checking the duplicacy of content on regular intervals this regular intervals if i may say you what do you have to do 
it can be it can be once in a week it can be twice in a week this person who will be asked to do a check would have to come onto this particular tool type in across let's say all right so i think this was being right checked across last time you got it right it was ethames.ac.in we spoke about it the other the last time absolutely right we saw that there is uh, is there any website which has you know taken across content from our website no there hasn't been there is no other website which has copied but let's say if we find out that there is a someone who has copied content what we do we send them across we send uh, them across an email call them up and tell them these websites which have copied content from us and tell them that you have done such kind of a wrong activity would you be pleased enough to would you be kind enough to actually go ahead and remove that if they do that's good else what you can do you can file across a legal complaint did i talk about dmca.com also i might have i might not i'm going to be quick on this dmca.com is a website guys where you can go ahead and file in across a legal complaint against that website which has copied content from yours okay it's called dmca i'm going ahead and typing in across the url over here it's called digital millennium copyright act what do you have to do when you get into dmca guys you have to go to the takedown section this website will charge you like 10 dollars or something and will file in across your request so you go to the takedown section here the questions will be asked across all right so you start with process of taking down the content of filing across the legal complaint so that's what i did and uh, as you can see these are the details which needs to be entered across okay you have to enter across the website which has stolen content and your website where the content was originally there you enter across your information your first name last name and so forth you enter the content also which has been copied and so forth and then you pay them the price which is usually i mean you do it yourself it's 10 dollars per month and so forth once that's been done this particular body this legal body will go ahead and talk to the search engines and ask them to find out and detect across that out of these two websites which one of those uh which one of those have created the content first the website which would have created the content first their uh, their content would have got indexed first so on that same logic on this logic the website whose content was being indexed first would be considered to be the original creators so the overall search engine ranking for the original content creators will be on the top i mean in the top in sense that will not get impacted negatively but the content stealers uh, the, the website which which had stolen the content its website ranking will keep falling down that'll keep falling down and so forth and it will not be there make sense so this is scenario 1 this is scenario 1 where the content on two different web pages are similar the scenario 2 guys when you have when you have same content on two different web pages of your website did we talk about that so goresh let me know did we talk about how do we really fix that sort of content duplicate content which is present across on two different web pages all right so we spoke about canonical tag and meta robots these are the two ways through which we can go ahead and all right we did okay i'm just going to go ahead and then skip that across so we are done with this so i'm not going to repeat that across so i'll just be quick on to this if in case you find if in case you find that there is duplicate content present within two pages of your website you get that uh, corrected with the help of two different tags either you use a canonical tag with the usage of canonical tag you just put in across uh, you know you give us you give across or you communicate across to the search engine that which web page is to be considered which web page is to be considered for ranking purposes and which web page is not to be is to be ignored right we spoke about that in detail last time or the other option is to go ahead and ask the search engines to not to index a certain page and rank it across 
for that very purpose you put across another tag that's called meta robots and content equal to no index so you will put in across no index over here if you put it index then the that page will be indexed and ranked across by search engine so we'll go ahead and put across no index so that was one now another thing guys which i want to talk about here in search engine optimization is robots.txt now robots.txt guys is another file which is used across for the purpose of giving a more information to the search engine and this information which is provided to the search engine guys with the help of this uh, file is the the information with regards to which all pages which all web pages of our website to be crawled and indexed and which all web pages not to be crawled indexed and promoted and listed in the search engine results now you might say why on earth will we go ahead and ask search engines not to crawl and index certain web pages well this happens across in a situation when our, let's say our website is pretty much in the initial stages it's under construction we haven't got great content on our website and we do not want search engines to go ahead and uh, crawl and index our web pages in a uh, you know when it's in the under construction phase maybe they might be dummy content they might be uh, bad content or right bad content in the sense i mean not appropriate content and so forth with that being said i'll also like to tell you as the name says dot txt txt is an extension guys which is used for a notepad file so it's actually a notepad file one can use across this robots dot txt generator tools in order to put in across information you know uh, information in terms of which all web pages to be crawled and indexed and which all web pages not to be crawled and indexed once you will insert across once you will insert the information it will tell you one second i'm just sharing across the link with each one of you all right so this doesn't seems to be going across in the chat okay here's the url guys now what happens is once you are able to create across the robots.txt file with the help of this you have to get that uploaded into the root folder where you will be putting across uh, i mean you will be giving across instruction to the developer so you would have to get this file created and give it to the developer to upload it in the root folder root folder of your website i'm saying it again robots.txt is a file is another file which is used for the purpose of shaping up your seo campaign and like i said the overall thing the overall uh, uh you know the the overall work which this file does is that it provides across instructions to the search engine or the crawler whatever you want to call that the instructions in terms of which all web pages of our website to be crawled and indexed and promoted in the search results and which all web pages not to be crawled and indexed and so forth okay with that being said why would we not want certain pages i also mentioned that certain pages uh, are not to be crawled because they are in the initial phase they are not being constructed fully all right you can use across this tool for the creation purpose and once it's been created you send that across to the developer and ask the developer to upload it into the root folder all right make sense guys i can show you how this really looks like the robots.txt give me a second it's your creation so let me just see for my website all right so as you can see i've typed in my website url guys and forward slash robots.txt now over here there are several you know there the several content which is written over here the several content which is over written over here guys has got a meaning to it has got a meaning to it and uh, the meaning if we talk about uh, has to do with what all pages to be allowed what all pages to be uh, crawled and indexed and what all pages not to be crawled and indexed okay so uh, i would not get into the nitty gritties of it that how this is to be written across is just with the help of that tool you can do that it's just with the help of that 
robots.txt tool you can mention the name the number of pages to be not to be crawled and the number of all those pages which are to be crawled and indexed that's it you can try and test it out and let me know if in case you feel face any problem all right let me just open up that tool right in front of you So this is the tool which is used across for the purpose of robots.txt creation, guys, that robots.txt file. Now, if my website has got 50 pages, I can define out of 50, 30 to be crawled and indexed and 20 not to be crawled and indexed. It's all up to me. What all section I want to be crawled and indexed and to be promoted in the search results and what all pages or what all section not to be crawled and indexed. So, Let's wait for this tool to open up. Here you go. As you move further down, it says, what all pages do you want to allow or disallow in terms of uh, to be crawled and indexed? Now there are several bots guys, several bots in the sense, several search engines. If you want to put in a cross request for every search engine, just select all, or you can select Google bot as a separate Google bot mobile, so there is a search engine which takes care of the mobile websites, mobile pages, or images and so forth and so on. It's better to always recommend it to use all. And let's say if you want to disallow certain web pages, you can type in across, let's say my contact us page. I don't want that to be crawled and indexed. Maybe I've got the wrong set of information. I can go ahead and mention that across. All right. So as you can see, here is the entire, here is the entire, uh, what do you say, commands. I can copy this, I can open a notepad file, paste it over there, and I can name that file, that notepad file as robots.txt, and I'll uh, put it right over there. All right, if I want to disallow certain more, right, if I want to disallow certain more files and so forth, I can mention it right over here. When it's done for all guys, the user agent asterisk comes in. All right, I don't want to go ahead and confuse you guys. Just letting you know that what all pages you don't want to be uh, dis not to be crawled, you can just go ahead and get them disallowed. Hope that makes sense. I'm moving further. And let me see what else. Uh, okay. Now the other element, guys, which is to do with the SEO part is the design element. The search engine optimizer is responsible for making sure that our website is loading well, is looking well, is showcasing content well for all the various, all the various devices, possible devices which internet users which uh, are using these days. Now this is one of the tools I'm sharing across the link with each one of you. All right, here you go. It says responsive design checker. I can type in across my website URL right over here. So this is my website URL. I am typing it across over here just to check whether my website looks perfectly, whether the design is absolutely correct, it's responsible, sorry, it's not responsible, it's responsive for all the various devices. All right, so it's loading up. So this is for iPad. Okay, it's, it's, it's working a bit slow. Let's just try to see. Wherever you have any questions, guys, feel free to put that across in the chat window, like I said, so that I can go ahead and answer that respectively. All right, so as you can see, for the iPad, the website looks something like this. I can see there is nothing which is getting trimmed or cropped and so forth. It's looking perfectly fine. It's just more responsive. Similarly, I can check for the various other screens. So iPhones, landscape, it looks something like this. For iPhone portrait, it looks something like this, right? So this is the responsive design checker, which should be used across by the search engine optimizers in order to check, in order to check the 
overall look and feel of your website for various different devices and screen guys hope it makes sense let me know if in case you have any question and that brings us to the end of search engine optimization guys so we have covered to a canonical ta uh, i mean the duplicate content the robots.txt we have covered across we have covered across the device friendly the mobile responsiveness the on page off page so that brings us to the end of search engine optimization we can go for a break right now guys and after the break we'll start with the search engine marketing which is the paid part make sense guys let me know in the chat window if you guys are good gaurish prasanjit and vijay in case of any queries you feel free to put that across in the chat window too thanks prasanjit and vijay for acknowledging gaurish are you good let me know all right perfect thanks so what we can do is it's almost 3:50 pm we'll take a 20 minutes break and then we'll meet after the break guys and we'll start with the paid part all right and then there uh one second uh, uh there are a few things all right so google webmaster is something which i have to talk about so there are a few things guys which are left with seo so before i start with search engine marketing there are a few more things which is the google webmaster i have to showcase and certain tool all right perfect i'll just check all right so time for a break and then we meet up the big guys perfect
All right, guys, let's get started after the break. Just trying to check if you guys can hear me. All right, so Goresh, Prasenjit, and Vijay, can you guys hear me? Just trying to check. Perfect. All right. So yeah, it's time to begin. It's 20 minutes. Perfect. Now, the other thing, guys, which I want to talk about uh, within search engine optimization, it's called Google Webmasters. Now, Google Webmaster has got a different name, which is a new name attached to it. That's called Google Search Console, first of all. Now, what is it? It is another product which is offered by Google and this is specifically meant for the search engine optimizers. All right, let me just open that across. So the way Google has got multiple products, guys, Google has got Google Analytics, or which we'll be understanding and working across on detail later on. Google has got uh, Google Drive, Google Map, Google Search Engine, and there are some real, several other products. One of the product which Google offers across specifically to the website owners, you can say, or the search engine optimizers of the website. So Webmaster, that's the name of the product which Google has, and that is primarily for the website owner. The name Webmaster in itself is, uh, you know, the Webmaster, the name Webmaster in itself means website owner, all right? I can go ahead and uh, give you a small brief about Search Console, guys, by, with this specific video they have got. I'm just gonna play it across. It's a one minute video. All right, just give me a second. That'll give you a glimpse of what exactly Search Console is all about. Let me just see if this is gonna run across right now or not. The internet is amazing. It's so easy to share anything you create with the entire world, like Alice. She just opened an online store for her custom jewelry. But now she is wondering, can people find her site and mobile app on Google? With Search Console, Alice can make sure that Google finds her store and shows it for the correct search queries. Search Console also displays the errors that Google found when reading her site and app. Alice can check those errors and fix them so all her pages can appear in search results. Every time Alice creates a new product page, she can use Search Console to see which terms lead people to her Google search results pages. And she can use that data to discover the most successful pages and products in her store so she can focus on that and increase traffic to her business. Also, Search Console regularly checks her site for errors and even sends an email alert if it finds any important issues. Now Alice can be sure that everything is okay with her site and app using Google Search Console. All right, guys. Create with the all right, guys, so this was just a quick brief of what exactly Search Console is all about. It did make you understand that anybody who has got uh, you know, a business and wants to get that business up and running in the online wing, uh, you know, search engine optimization is the key core element, key core uh, digital marketing channel through which you can promote your business. And if you want to do that, Search Console is a product that will help you to get across your search engine optimization campaign get stronger. The way through which the Search Console is gonna make the SEO campaign stronger is by giving suggestions if there are certain errors on the website, right? That was number one point that was there in the video also. And number two, not just the suggestions in terms of improving the website. If there is something wrong going on the website, the website is not getting crawled easily by the search spiders, then there would be a message which Google will send you across, right? Google give you a lot of suggestions. Google will intimate you if you're going in the wronger direction. Plus, uh, in the search console, you will be able to see the queries which people are typing in and uh, your website is appearing for them, right? For all those queries where your website is appearing in the organic space and your website is getting clicks as well, not just appearing but also getting clicks as well, you can get to see that search report. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Let's say there are 10 various search queries for which your website is ranking across on different positions. So maybe for first search query, it might be on the average position is fifth. For a second search query, the average position is 20th. I mean, you get all that data. You get the data with regards to the performance of your website in the organic space, plus also the recommendations, the suggestions on how to improve across your SEO campaign. So let's look at this step by step, guys. How do we go ahead and first of all connect across our website with the Google Webmaster or the other name is Search Console. In the video, as it says, Search Console. This is a new name, guys, which is given to given to this product. The original name for this product was Webmaster initially. It's been only one year since the name got changed and it's called Search Console. So if somebody says uh, Search Console or Webmaster, it means the same. <coughs> Excuse me. Prasenjit says, is it, like, is it free as like Gmail it to a certain limit? The answer is yes. The entire limit is free. I mean, there is no, there is no paid version to this and there is only a free version available across. What do you need over here in order to get onto a search console, guys, is to first of all sign in with your Gmail account only. All right. So you would need to go ahead and type in across absolutely it is great that google is offering all this for free now my <coughs> one second <coughs> i'm sorry my website uh some of my websites my clients websites are already connected over here so don't get yourself don't don't get confused guys by seeing so much stuff when you will be doing it for the first time this thing will not compare for each one of you what you need to do, you need to sign in. The moment you will sign in, guys, the, the screen which will be there right in front of you for getting connected with the search console is going to be like this. It will say add a property. What do you have to do? You have to enter across the URL of your website. Now, my website is already connected. So what I'll do, I'll just take across an example over here. Let me just see. All right, so here's this one website URL, guys, which I'm typing in over here. It can be an Android app also for which we would like to uh, get across connected with Webmaster. I've typed in the URL of the website. I'm clicking on to add. This is my wife's website. So, I mean, this is just a, uh, you know, a basic dummy domain which I booked a few, few weeks back. Now, what it's saying, Google Search Console is saying that you have to verify your ownership of this website. Only the owners of the website can actually get across Webmaster Connected. For that very purpose, what we need to know, if I am the owner of this website, I should have the backend details of my website. If that's the case, I'm the owner, I have the website backend details. I'm opening across the WordPress admin detail guys the wordpress admin i'm opening across which is the back end of my website the the wordpress back end so when i logged in when i'm logging into my wordpress so i have to log in through gmail id absolutely in search console you have to log in through your gmail id that is correct prasenjit now when you have logged in through your gmail id into search console that was the screen and in a new tab you open across your wordpress based website now over here in the WordPress section, guys, we would be going ahead and clicking on to plugins. Okay. And uh, since it's an additional feature, it's an additional extra functionality, which we are trying to add to our website. We will be going, we will be going to the plugin section and clicking on to add new. I think I told you the other day that plugin is something which is used across for adding something extra to your website, right? The way we get across our phone, when we buy a new phone, we are always being provided across certain default applications. The default applications are, the default applications if we talk about, uh, comes inbuilt. But if we want to add something more, if we want to add uh, some more functionalities to our phone, some more applications, we go to the App Store or the Google Play Store. Similarly, the phone has got an app store or a play store, Google Play Store. We have got a plugins over here. We go to the plugin section, which is by default over there. 
and then click on to add new. Now here's the plugin store. The same plugin store was used across when we were inserting across the SEO Yoast plugin, right? This time what we will be doing, we will be inserting across, what do you say? The Google Webmaster. All right, so that's what I have typed in over here. All right, so it's gonna, just gonna go ahead and show us across the recommendations. All right, so just bear with me for a moment. I think it's taking a bit of time to open up. Open up in the sense, suggest across various different plugins related to Google Webmaster. All right. Now, as you can see, the very first plugin, guys, which says, Easy Google Webmaster tool, you can go ahead and insert this, or you can use across any other, but like I told you, okay, even this one is there, which is says verify Google Analytics and Webmaster, but the one which I prefer across, out of all the, the various plugin options which come across, I try to, uh, you know, take the one which has got the maximum installs. So I, I can see the, this particular plugin has got more than 7,000 installs, which is quite higher than any other. So I'm going ahead and clicking on to install now. The moment I click on to install now, it says the next thing as activate. I'm clicking on to activate then. All right, now what we did, we clicked on to install now and then activate. And all of a sudden, on the left-hand side, what you can see, a new option which says Webmaster has come in, guys, okay? It says Webmaster. What I'm doing, I'm going ahead and clicking on the Webmaster right over here. This was the new tab which has got installed the moment we installed and activated Webmaster. Now, the moment I clicked on the webmaster, guys, it's saying paste the HTML meta tag. Now, what does this really mean? There is some HTML meta tag, which is going to be provided by Google Search Console, which we have to copy and paste it right over here. The moment we will paste it and then save it, the webmaster configuration will happen. So let's go back to the Search Console, all right, which is in the other tab. Now, recommended method is one. So there are four different methods through which you can connect across our website. We are not going with the recommended one. We are clicking on to alternate. And the moment I click on to alternate methods, there are four different alternate methods which are over here. Now, out of these four and the number first one, which is the recommended one, out of total five, we have to use only one. Out, I'm saying it again, alternate methods are four. And the record, there is one recommended method which makes it total five methods to connect across our website to Search Console. We have to use only one out of these five in order to get this connected. The very first option, which is HTML tag, and that says add a meta tag underneath alternate method. We'll go ahead and click onto this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this. So, first of all, select this entire meta code then copy it, and then I'm moving back to my website. And here I have to paste across the HTML meta tag. So I'm doing a paste over here. The moment I paste it right over here, I'm clicking on to save changes. All right. All right, it says settings saved, guys. 
it's been saved i'll go back to my search console all right and then click on to verify the last option which says verify i hope you guys uh, were clear on to what we did now what it says it says congratulations you have successfully verified the ownership of your website hope it makes sense let me just open across my word document this is okay not this one all right it has started giving me the emails as well so google webmaster here we go so what we have done we have configured it now i'm clicking on to continue <clears throat> now all those suggestions and all that stuff guys will come in when the data will start pouring in the data will start pouring in once my once i'll have traffic onto my website and so forth plus uh, since this is a pretty new website guys the website which i have configured right now so that's why there is no data and uh, even if the website is old this crawl errors and analytics and uh, details regarding to the sitemap and so forth that will come after certain interval i'm saying it again since the website has got configured just now that's why there is uh, a lag in the data it might take 24 to 48 hours for the data to really come in over here provided the website should have some amount of traffic and so forth if it's a new website there won't be a lot of data which you'll get what we need to do then in this case in order to make it explain to you the important elements in order to explain the important elements of search console i'm taking example of a, a website of one of my client okay i'm clicking on that and then with the help of that website <clears throat> i'm going to show you certain options certain things which which are uh, which have to be looked by the digital marketer okay over here this is the first screen guys which you get to see once you'll start getting across traffic on your website so over here it says the site errors first of all the server connectivity the domain name server which is dns stands for domain name server robots.txt also i told you the file is getting fetched or not it's all shown in green it means that it's working well everything is working well over here <clears throat> let's say if there would have been something wrong then definitely it is a uh, role and responsibility of the developer to go ahead and make changes and and get them corrected all right there are five server error we can go ahead and click on to crawl error right over here and see what are those crawl errors okay so the moment i clicked on to this <clears throat> it tells me all these things are working well but there are five server errors and here we go these are certain pages which are having some issue and uh, what we need to do we need to go ahead and download this okay download this entire five urls which are over here in an excel sheet all right so i've got this up and here is the here's the list of the urls which are having issues guys now i can go ahead and talk more about these response codes but uh, this would really confuse you this is more to do with the development task and the best thing is to go ahead and send this across to the developer and say that there are certain server errors and so forth with these what i can do i can send it across so, uh, my my clients uh, developer details are there with me i can straight away go ahead and share it right i can send this workbook all right so what you can see uh
All right. So, you know, this has given you a flavor of how it really works across in the internet marketing agency and so forth. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm sending across an email to my client stating that these are the errors and I'm requesting you across to please get them fixed. Right. And so forth. Now, this is a job of the either the developer or whatever. I mean, or maybe your client, whosoever is in question right now. So I'm sending this straight away. All right, so here we go. This is one thing, guys. Now, access denied. All right, so this was all part of it. The, the sheet had entire stuff, guys. Okay, now this was crawl error. Now, let me tell you the other things which uh, one needs to look into the search console. I'm going back to the dashboard. The dashboard doesn't show everything which is part of the console. The dashboard shows across the most important elements. Crawl errors is something which I've already shown it to you. All right. Now the search analytics. The search analytics, if I click on, the search analytics guys gives us the report in terms of how many number, how many number of times, first of all, our website has appeared in the search engine results. And that too for what all search queries. So let's say uh, I do want to check it not just for the last 28 days. I want to check it for the last 90 days or I can even customize it. So, all right, so there's another thing which I want to tell you. The maximum, um, maximum amount of uh, time limit which I can do, it's 25th November to 22nd, so it's December, Jan, right? It's 90 days only. So the maximum amount of days, guys, for which we can see the data is last 90 days. Uh, older than 90 days, we cannot check the data in Google Search Console. Whereas in analytics, we can see that. In analytics, we can see the stats for lesser than, you know, for older than 90 days, we can even see the data which is like two years old or five years old and so forth. But some of the elements which Search Console gives us, Google Analytics is not able to provide us. Number one thing which search console is able to give us and website Google Analytics is not able to. Number one is the all the queries for which we are getting across uh, hits, guys. So the topmost query in the organic space is this, which we are getting across the maximum clicks for in all of these. All right. SharePoint Quizmaker, blah, blah, blah. And these all the ones, these all are the ones and so forth. I can anytime go ahead and uh, you know, again, uh, take, export this across in an Excel sheet and show it across to my client saying that, I mean, there are so many, there's so many, uh, you know, queries for which we are getting across organic traffic and so forth. These have been the number of clicks and so forth. I can download this right from here and not just the number of clicks guys. I mean, I can go ahead and get across more information like what all pages. All right. So from the pages perspective also, I can get across the data. I can get across data from the pages perspective. So let's try to download it from here. All right, so I'm clicking on to, okay. <clears throat> All right, la let's open this up. All right, so here is the result. Here is the overall analytics report, the organic results analytics report, guys. Now, this is not for every uh, single campaign, guys. The traffic which my website, which our website would have received from uh, what do you call email marketing, social media marketing, that is not part of it. It's only to do with the SEO space. Now, what I can do, the pages which are which haven't got much of clicks, I can go ahead and delete them also and so forth. But let's try to send this entire, because there have been instances when the pages have been shown, but there have not been clicks. Let me tell you each and every element over here. The first element, what you can see over here is the website URL, right? The web pages URL of my website. First is the home page. The home page has been shown across in the last 90 days 
11,082 times in the search results. All right. Now, this is for uh, a specific country. And this specific country, if we talk about, there is no filter. Okay. So, this is for the all the countries, guys. I can go ahead and put in across a filter over here in terms of countries, and I can put a filter from the devices also. But we haven't done this over here. So, this is purely for each and every device, a total list, and each and every country basically. Now, 11,082 times the home page have appeared in the search results. It could be for various different keywords, guys. Okay. And the number of times there has been a click, it's 804. 804 and impressions means the view, the number of times the search result has come across. The website, the home page has been ranking. In the search in the search engine and it has appeared it has appeared in front of various different people who uh, on 11,082 occasions now out of 11,082 occasions every time it hasn't got a click it's only 804 clicks guys now there is another matrix which is called CTR that stands for click-through rate guys click-through rate this is something we were we would have to really uh, look into i mean we would have studied in uh, we would be studying this in detail ctr stuff in paid marketing but let me tell you ctr is a clear indication of how well your title tag and meta tag description have been how attractive they are if your title tag and meta tag description are attractive then your search result would be uh, clicked across by a good number of people your ctr will would be higher how is it that so let's say I go on to, I am, I'm giving you an example. The example which I'm giving you over here is let's say in a search engine bar, I'm typing across a search query, which is the name of this particular, all right, so this is Yahoo somehow coming across. Give me a second. So let's say there is this search result. The search query, this is the, you know, this is the keyword. This is the same keyword, guys, for which uh, the name of the website is Adapt hyphen India. So I have typed in Adapt Software India and so forth. That's the name of my same client. Now, as you can see, the home page is coming across. In Google Webmaster, what will happen? In Google Webmaster, there is going to be one, uh, what do you say, impression which will get added on because this has been seen. Even there would be one more impression which will get add on to this page for this page for uh, for these three pages basically. All right, for these three pages which are the internal pages of the website, there would be one impression added on to this, one impression added for this page, also one impression added for this because they have been shown. But the one which I'll click on, there would be a click added on to this. So let's say the home page. So if I'll click on to this, it will be one impression and one click for this. So there would be a click and an impression added both. But for this, this will be for the second one, it would be zero clicks in one impression. And also for this also, it would be zero click in one impression, which we get added on. The moment this is being clicked, guys, uh, the web page opens up. And this was only because of the organic listing. Now, the point which I was trying to make from the CTR perspective is that the if this particular tag, title tag, if you remember, I told you the title tag appears over here on the top. And the meta description appears over here on this. If the title tag and meta description are strong, then for the number of times the impressions have come in, the, the clicks would be more. In short, the title tag and meta tag description, if they are stronger, your CTR would be higher. If that's not the case, let's say if I find out that the CTR for a specific web page, let's say this one, it's 0 0.54. You know, if 0 0.54 is the CTR for this page, it means the title tag and meta tag for this page are not attractive. You know, this page would be ranking up with, with a very, uh, you know, very disappointing title tag and a very uh, unattractive title tag and an unattractive meta tag description. Just because of that only, there are only 26 people who have clicked out of 4,825 times it has appeared. We always want more clicks for the same number of impressions. Had it been instead of 26, let's say had it been uh, 500, 
for the same number of times the website has appeared for the same number of times website has appeared my website would have got clicked 500 times my click through rate would be higher this kind of a report gives us an understanding that which particular page title tag and meta tag description are not that effective and so forth so cdr is something which we look at very closely and we try to make uh, changes in the title tag and meta tag description for those pages which haven't got a pretty strong cdr guys the other thing is the position guys the position stands for the search engine position the home page which you are seeing over here has got a position of 10 that this is an average position the 10th position you guys might be saying how come 9.3 there is no position as 9.3 it's either 9 or either it's 10 well this is a overall average there have been there would have been certain instances when this particular page would have been ranking in the 9th position and certain instances when the web page would have been ranking in the 10th and certain times number 11 certain times number 12 out of all those uh, what do you say situations are there is an average which has been taken out there's an average taken out uh, for all the instances and the average position is being told across if you find that the position is not that strong you would have to really go ahead and push across your web page up for the for the keywords for the focus keyword and so forth hope it makes sense guys let me know with a quick confirmation if you guys are good you got a question let me know are you guys doing good perfect thanks vijay prasanjit and goresh are you guys doing good all right thanks goresh and prasanjit really uh, appreciate that now moving further guys okay what i can do i can again share this across so let's Wherever you have any question, feel free to put that across in the chat window so that I can go ahead and answer that across. All right, so it makes a lot of sense to actually keep sharing this kind of a report with your clients just because it gives across an understanding to the client that yes, SEO is working across and it is giving them across, uh, you know, results, traffic, and so forth. all right so that was another one i'm going back to the webmaster report give me a second the webmasters so we saw this we can always get across more number of stuff over here this is the overall report for the last 90 days and we can like i said filter out from a country perspective our numbers will go down the devices the devices guys could be either the tablet or a mobile and so forth right desktop mobile tablet we can even segment this data in all of these we can segment our data also from uh, the perspective of the search from web or image or videos and so forth hope it makes sense so and this is the overall chart that talks about when is the overall uh, traffic coming in as you can see there is always a spike and then there is always a downfall guys any any uh, uh, what do you say anything which you guys can think of why is this happening why is it happened that there is a spike and then it goes further down any reason on what is the reason behind this overall fluctuation anything which you can think of Maybe any try you want to put in across. What do you think could be the reason behind 
the traffic on certain days going up and on certain days going down you think there's uh, i mean okay i would like you to give it a try i'll definitely go in and talk more about it i can tell you what is the reason behind this and this is not just for this particular website guys it's purely i mean it's more or less with most of the websites the traffic goes up and down and uh, how is this related across all right prasenji says i think on website on weekend traffic would be very high all right so this is a corporate website so what happens is with with the corporate website with the business website the traffic is the other way around uh, less number of people are searching in for this it related services during the weekend there are more spikes there are more there's more traffic during the weekdays right as more people browsing preferably days for absolutely so monday to fridays the audience the uh, the traffic is more and the traffic on saturdays and sundays are lesser all right whereas if we talk about even for e-commerce website it's the it's this way only maximum number of sales the more the amount of traffic which e-commerce websites in the b2c space also it's more during the weekdays and that too if i talk about the timings it's more during the lunch hours and so forth you guys got that correct thanks for acknowledge thanks for replying in guys really appreciate that now this is with the search analytics now the other options guys is links to your site now when we see the links to your site guys these are the off page now when we saw the moz.com tool which was giving us the backlinks right similar backlink checker stuff can be done backlink checking thing can be done with the help of google search console all right as you can see microsoft.com uh yellow page youtube pinterest i mean these are the websites these are those websites which are getting giving across backlinks guys all right from wordpress bharat listing vc s data i mean so forth and so on now the other thing is the number of links that's another one well what it really means is from pinterest from pinterest 997 backlinks guys 997 backlinks are coming across from pinterest and from microsoft it's 155 backlinks guys the number of pages the total number of pages which are linked from microsoft is total five internal pages of this website are back, are you know connected across and so forth that's what the data says now how is it helpful for us the way it is helpful across guys is that when we get to see so today it's feb 25th on feb 25th when i say when i see that almost 190 domains are there which are linking back to my website and uh, 3000 something were the links right if i'll go back the data which i have says 3083 now this has to be in a progressive fashion guys now let's say if i i go come back to this site to the search console platform basically after a month i should be in a situation to see i mean i should be seeing that there is a progression happening there is the amount of backlinks uh, which have which are there for my website that's in a that's that's moving up instead of going down i can even go ahead and share share across this you know sheet with my client well i did couple of a uh, couple of them right in front of you just to give you a feel of it you can always go ahead and download all this data and share it with your client now this is uh, what do you say the pages which have got the maximum backlinks now this is from the overall dissection of all the internal pages guys all right the home page the internal pages the links and so forth the source domain and so forth all right so 166 uh, different websites are giving backlink to the home page and the total number of backlinks which these 166 domains are giving across is 1640 now the only thing which is helpful over here is to make sure that there is a regular check there is a regular check of this data guys and it's been seen that uh, this is in an upward trend it's going further well all right so let's move further and okay 
Now, the other thing, guys, is internal links. Other than the links to your site, there are internal links. Intern internal links refers to one page connecting across to the another page. Okay, one page connecting to the another page in the sense, if I'll go to the website. You'll find out that let's say there is a content on one of the internal pages, and within the content, there is a backlink, there is a linkable text. That the moment we click onto that linkable text, it goes on to another internal page of our website. So, internal linking also absolutely helps. Let's say if I go into the service section, or let's say SharePoint add ins, I click onto project management system. All right, so it's just opening up. Give me a second. All right, so what you can see on the right hand side of this page, guys, there are these links. All right, so these are, are these a link? All right, not really. So this one doesn't give any clear example of that. Let me just see if there's another page. All right. Okay, now as you can see, we are on the service page, guys. On this one of the internal page, there is this link, there is this text which is linkable, another one, another one. Had it been that the, the moment I click onto these, a different website open up, then this would mean an outbound link, an external link, right? If, if I'm clicking onto this link and it goes on to any other website other than the adapt-india, this would mean it's an outbound link given by adapt-india.com website to some other link, right? For, for, to some other website. That other website, in short, would be getting across a backlink from us. But in this scenario, that's not happening. It is the other internal pages. So there is another internal page, another one, another one. So all various different internal pages of this website itself are going to open up if we'll click onto all of them one after another. All right. So let's say I click onto the SharePoint 2016 one. That's what I did just now. It's a different internal page which is opening up. Now, search engine optimization becomes stronger if we have internal linkings this way, guys. All right. What is happening? The search engines are getting across inputs in terms of various different pages there onto the website. Or, in short, if I say whenever search engine crawler or a bot will travel to, let's say, this particular page, it will keep crawling from left to right. And the moment these links will come in, the crawler will be able to identify new pages on your website. You know, these new pages on your website gets identified because of internal linking and internal linking always helps in getting your entire website crawled and indexed. The way sitemap also helps, similarly, internal linking also helps, guys, in order to identify the other web pages of your website and making the search engine optimization much more stronger. All right, so with that being said, the internal linking concept being explained across, we have got data in terms of internal linkings, internal links in the Google Search Console, as you can see on the left-hand side. Now, the contact us page, if we talk about, the contact us page is linked across from 1 to 1,278 web pages. All right, 1,278 web pages of the website itself. The careers page is getting across internal backlink, internal internal backlinking from 904 other web pages of the website and so forth. Hope this is all clear, guys. So these are the various other pages which are giving backlink to all these respective internal pages, right? So again, what should we really look at over here? We should be looking at, I mean, we should keep downloading this kind of data, guys. 
if I have downloaded this data on a particular date, after a month and so forth, I should download it again and try to see what's the variation, what's the difference, uh, what was the 30 days back story and what's the present story, what's the present situation. If the present situation has given me more links as compared to the previous one, definitely means that we are in a, our SEO campaign is going in the right direction and giving us the results. It's giving us much more figures in order to strengthen our SEO campaign. All right, so we have understood search analytics links to your site. We've understood internal links. The other thing is manual action, guys. Now, what we mean by manual action is if Google feels that we have been going ahead and unnecessarily try to manipulate the search engine algorithm, we are trying to go ahead and uh, put, you know, manipulate with, the, with those bad malpractices, bad practices of building backlinks, which I told you like directory submission or forum submission for, you know, posting across links onto social media websites or blog commenting, putting across your website link onto the blog comments and so forth. All these apps, all these stuff, all that stuff, which is uh, unnecessarily trying to, you know, manipulate the search engine algorithm. That's what we call it. If you've been doing this, Google can go ahead and penalize you and the overall different name, the different term which is used across for penalization is called manual action so manual web spam action is something which would be done by google for your website if that happens it means that google is not happy with the way you have been optimizing your website either you have been using duplicate content or you have been going ahead and using uh, various wrong practices of off page optimization and if that happens, you get across a message. So you'll get a message in the manual action and right over here in the message section saying that your website has been uh, put into the manual web spam. There is a manual web spam action found on your website. And you have to, if you have to go really go ahead and get out of it, you have to do an extra effort, which is of looking at your all the backlinks and seeing which all, which all backlinks are uh, you find to be spammy or created across unnecessarily forcefully by you you know those who which haven't come uh, on their own and you have gone ahead and created by yourself by manipulating or in short you can say by posting across uh, your link your website link at several places then you should go ahead and look into them and straight away go ahead and delete them straight away go ahead and delete them ask the boss those people who have created them uh, i mean ask those website owners from whose the, uh, this particular link is coming or if you have the authority or if you have the uh, bandwidth to go ahead and delete it, you have the, I mean, it's open, the backlink is open. Uh, you have the rights to edit it, go ahead and edit or delete it, so forth. Right, so manual action is that. Manual action, you get that across in the message section, not just uh, a bad action you get to see over here. You also get to see across various other things in uh, message section. In the message section, Google can go ahead and send you across. Google can go ahead and uh, send you across, what do you say, messages with regards to uh, not just penalizing your website, but also whenever there is a virus attack or a hacking issue with your website. If there is a hacking issue, there is a virus attack on your website, Google will go ahead and send you a message and you can absolutely go ahead and reply to that asking for help and so forth. So if Google has to go ahead and uh, you know talk to the website owner, it's only through Search Console Google is able to do that. So I've told you about dashboard, I've told you about messages, I've told you about search traffic, various options, and I'll, I'll come out to the search appearance and so forth. Underneath manual action, we've got the international targeting. In the international targeting option, we do have the choice of picking across so language, you can just leave that as of now because it's not set up these days. It's a country. So which country are you trying to promote across your business the most? All right. And also it says, okay, now this is a new stuff. Add your business to Google Maps. That's been already done. Let me see if this is connected. I'll talk about Google Maps, guys, in our upcoming sessions. Or maybe I can talk about it today itself. Google map is something is another product which helps us in promoting across our business in the, uh, you know, that Google map stuff. 
Google Business helps us in doing that. So as you have, as you would have seen, several uh, businesses listing you get to see within the Google Maps. This is how it absolutely gets done. All right, just give me a second. I'll just check if there is. Give me a second. I'll just log into a different Google account that will help in order to connect it. So I have a different Google account to which this business was already being connected across. All right, just give me a second. It's opening up, guys. So I'm just trying to see if there is already, so my particular client's Google My Business listing is already there. I just want to check if that can be connected. This is a new option which they have come up with. All right. All right, no, I don't think so. It's over here. All right. Okay, I'll I'll show you then this this stuff later on. How this is being done? This is not part of it. Okay, so country, whichever country you want to focus on, and also you can add your business to Google Maps, which I'll I'll share with you. I'll just show you the overall mechanism for that in quite some time. Now that was underneath search traffic international targeting. I can go ahead and change across the uh, what do you say? the country which I want to focus more on and so forth. All right. Now United Arab Emirates. All right. So for this client of mine, United Arab Emirates is uh, to be focused more on. So search engine will actually take that into consideration more. All right. So my changes have been successfully saved. I'll go ahead and I can share this with the client as well. All right, so here we go. The country has been changed. And now the next thing is mobile usability, guys. When I go to the mobile usability option, now here are the another set of issues, guys, which could be there with your website. And that's more to do with the uh, mobile screen. Now here are the suggestions with regards to the uh, issues which are there. Issues are like that the content is more wider than the screen or there are clickable elements that are too closer together. All right. Then there is another thing which is called viewport guys. Viewport is a technology which is used for the purpose of, uh, you know, for the purpose of creating across your mobile website. If viewport is not set up properly, there are pages. There are four pages where viewport technology is not set up properly. There are 13 pages where the clickable elements are close together. There are 14 pages which have content wider than the screen. And then there are three pages where text is too small. Now, again, in this kind of a scenario, when you get this kind of issues, guys, it's always better to go ahead and download this again in an Excel sheet and straight away send it to the developer, whether the developer is with you if you're working for the same organization for which you're optimizing, or maybe if it is. Uh, a client of yours okay now here you go i'm just give me a second i'm gonna share this across with the client again and i'm gonna ask the client to actually get this corrected because till the time these uh errors do not get corrected there's definitely there's definitely, uh, I mean, a scenario when you won't get the maximum fruits, you know, the maximum benefits won't really come in.
Right, so I'm asking the client to kindly refer to the Excel sheet and get them corrected for better optimization purpose. All right, so I'm hereby sharing that across with the client and, and, and one second. Now, jumping on to this other elements of my search console, guys, I've shown you the messages section. All right, so there's one message, guys, which have come just now. And as you can see, it says, the target country has been changed. That's the new message. All right, I can go ahead and uh, even confirm my targeting location by reviewing location and so forth. I'll show you that Google business stuff in a while. And when we were under search traffic, I've shown you the search analytics links to your site have been shown the internal linking. I have been, I have told you, and what do we really need to do on a regular basis? I've told you that I've told you about manual actions. If in case there is something wrong, which you're doing with your website, you get to see, you get a message over there or you get a message over, over here as well. So any of these two uh, options, any of these two tabs can really inform you if you're doing something wrong, then, uh, comes in the inter international targeting I've shown you, mobile usability I also I have shown you. Now comes in Google index, guys. Google index status shows the number of pages. All right, let me just show you. The total number of pages which have been indexed so far. All right. Now, as you can see, there is an improvement over here. There is an improvement in the overall number of pages which have been indexed. Now, what happens is when you have created your website, the number of pages doesn't remain same. You keep adding more pages, you keep deleting old pages also. This is an ongoing scenario in most of the corporate worlds. So as you can see, this is 20th of March 2016 and so forth. That's the date. We were sitting at almost close to 240 pages. It went up, then it went down. It means there would have been certain pages which have got deleted. Then it kept going up and so forth. And if we talk about the situation on 1st of January 2017, 397 pages. But as of now, if we talk about today's situation, is 381. So it is consistent, and that's absolutely okay to go with. And we can even share such kind of a chart or a data with the client showing that this is the kind of, uh, you know, indexed pages we have got at present. All right. Now, when I click onto the advanced section, guys, the advanced section gives across the overall URLs which have been blocked by robots. Now, we talked about robots.txt option or the meta robots. If you remember, in a scenario when you are blocking certain pages, then this particular option, this particular page, the advanced section underneath index status will show us how many pages have you blocked by the robots. There is none over here. All right. I'm just opening across the Excel sheet, which just got downloaded. And here you have the total number of pages which were being indexed. It's giving us the data on 20. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and improve the size, big, uh, increase the size. So this is the index data, guys. On 28th of Ma of Feb 2016, 224 pages were being indexed. And if I see the if I'll see for today, 19th of Feb, that's the latest figure. That's a, we have the latest figures being collected from, from uh, you know, for 19th of Feb is 381. They were, so it went up to 415 also at one given point of time, which is 20th of November, but there would have been certain deletion of pages and so forth. That's why it would have done. One can share this kind of a stuff also with the client. All right. I can do that later on and let me just go ahead and show you the other stuff. So that's to do with index data, blocked resources being the another element right over here. Now there were a couple of pages. There were pages being blocked across in the uh, month of January and so forth, but they have been removed. Okay. Now, remove URLs being the other option. I told you that in order to remove across a URL, guys, which is from the search results, you can go ahead and use across either the robots.txt 
or you can go ahead and use across the option which is called uh what do you call robots.txt or the meta robot stack right these are the two things which we can use in order to give across instructions to search engines to not to include not to index a certain page of our website all right those were the two things let's say it takes a lot of time for you to go ahead and put across the meta robot stack to meta robot stack and change it from uh, index to no index or it will take you time to go ahead and edit the robots.txt and get it uploaded into the root folder it, it, let's say it's a time taking process and you're not able to do it very quickly if you have a request if you have a, a scenario when you want to do uh, remove across a certain page from the search results on a quicker note what you can do you can go to remove url section right over here in the search console in the search console you go to the remove urls and then click on to temporarily hide it will tell you it will ask you to put in across the url enter the entire url that url will not be promoted will not be indexed will not be shown across in the search results right from then and there all right till the time you do not give across uh, i mean request on the other side so i mean till the time you do not uh, go ahead and remove it further from here so if you have put in a request it that url remains over here for that time period that url will not be indexed and will not be shown across in the search results for any given query guys okay so that's to do with google indexed so we have understood search traffic google indexed uh, search appearance guys i'll just talk about that now so google index is also done so then i'll come on to the crawl the number one is structured data let me just see if i have to talk more about structured data right now okay structured data guys means uh, what do you say rich snippets rich snippets if i talk about is this one second so if i go ahead and type in oh oops one second i'll go into google.com the moment somebody types across the moment somebody types across a brand name what do you get to see on the right hand side guys is this this is actually called a rich snippet all right which is usually taken across from the website data so there is a file there's a file on the website guys which is called schema i'll just tell you it's called schema or schema how do you pronounce that this is a file which has to be created by the developers and you give across inputs to your developer that this is what we want in the introduction part and so forth but there are certain certain things which are getting pulled across about this brand which is like stock price and so forth that is more or less getting uh, you know uh, imported across from any other website from let's say wikipedia and so forth now schema file guys i do not want to focus more on the schema right now because it's more of an advanced level i don't want you to get confused just just uh, understand the concept the rich snippets first of all are these right these are rich snippets these are extra added functionality which comes in majorly when you type across your brand name your branded keyword your brand name in the search bar so if i have done it for amazon similarly i can let's say do for apple all right when i do for apple as you can see this is rich snippet for apple i can do for now i'm taking across bigger names oh sorry all right as you can see over here now these are rich snippets these usually comes across for the smaller brands also guys and going back so it's not been implemented right now for my client i'll definitely get that done for that there is a structured data in the html markup this is a bit technical and as i told you schema or schema dot uh, schema is the file name which has to be created and uploaded onto the website in order to get this done so you have to give across instructions to the developer for the for the schema to be created across you can actually ask your developer developers are aware of that and rich cards are similar to that so rich cards give across instructions all right so the structured data is so as you can see structured data when it's been done that helps to get across rich cards all right which is a snippets only 
Now, data highlighter is also for the same part. It highlights the data which is extra, okay? As you can see over here, this is the data which is coming up across. Usually you get to see for websites. So for Facebook, there is no extra data which is coming up, but for Amazon, it was there. This all is part of this entire thing. So it's like this. These all extra add-ons. Your, your tweets are actually getting represented here. Your other internal pages are getting represented here. This is all part of schema file, the structured data, basically. That's the other name. All right, so search appearance, guys, uh, comes across with the help of this. And the most important element, which you will find to be very much of a beneficial to each one of you, it's right over here, underneath HTML improvements, you get across, you get across information about how many various pages on your website has got duplicate meta description. I believe you guys remember the other day, the last weekend, we spoke about that the meta description should not be copied on two different pages. If I have meta description written for one single web page, it should not be copy to another page and so forth. Every web page should have its own unique, every web page should have its own unique title tag, should have its own unique meta tag description, it should have its own unique, uh, you know, title tag and meta tag description, plus the character limit also I told you, it should not be lesser or shorter to certain character limit, which I told you. Now what you can do when you click on to duplicate meta description over here, here are the list of URLs, guys, list of all those pages which have got duplicate title tag. All right, so this is meta description, basically. I can download this. All right, so I've got this downloaded across, and as you can see, the pages with duplicate meta descriptions are right now over here. All right, so these are the meta descriptions, guys. And as you can see, this is the meta description, guys. This is the meta description, and it's there on two different URLs, which is these. Or rather, yeah, these are the two ones. So is this page, which is Glow Global Support. This is one URL. And the other URL is this one, the staff one, right? This is something which is to be kept in mind, guys, that this should not happen. So I can go ahead and again, share it with the team, either my per internal team who's working on it, who is responsible for on page, or let's say if my client is responsible for this, I can go ahead and share it across with my team basically. All right. So I'll just go ahead and send it to myself. I'll send it to my team later on. So this is to be corrected. If this is not going to be corrected, guys, these kind of things, then definitely your SEO will go for a toss. All right. All right. So hope it makes sense. I am moving across to the other thing. Give me a second. So this was to do with the meta description. Similarly, I can get across recommendation for those pages which have got long meta description. I do not see even a single page which has got a long meta description. Then we have pages, five pages with short meta description, guys. Now it is absolutely important to go ahead and make sure that the meta descriptions are not shorter. I can go ahead and download this too. And again, and again, I can do several other things, right? Similarly, we have got pages with missing title tags. So there are pages which are, these are the pages which do not have title tags at present at all. All right. So it's absolutely needed to go ahead and get that corrected. I'm going back over here and there are 36 pages which have got duplicate title tag, right? All these needs to be corrected. Duplicate title tag, are there on 36 pages, guys. All right, so that gives you a clear indication of 
how well can you really shape up your SEO campaign with the help of Google Webmaster? So this is a great tool, guys, which helps every search engine optimizer. There is no page which has got long title tag. There is no web page which has got short title tag. Or there is no web page which has got non-informative title tag and so forth. All right, and there is no issues with the non-indexable content on the website. That's what it says. That means it's good. Let me just go back one second. All right, now the next one is accelerated mobile pages. Now accelerated mobile pages are those pages which helps in improving across the website performance on the, uh, what do you say, mobile. So this is a new initiative which have been taken across by Google very recently. And uh, it's a different form of a coding altogether. It's an open source stuff, accelerated mobile pages. And only few developers are aware of it. If this is to do again with the development side, you, if you do not have the AMPs, the uh, accelerated mobile pages, you might lose out on a smaller fraction, a smaller fraction of the opportunity to go ahead and improve across your search engine ranking further. All right, so if, if they are there, then the web pages will load faster and they will look much more better on mobile devices even when there are slow networks, guys, okay? Even if there are slow networks, the accelerated mobile pages will help your website to load up perfectly. All right, so that's to do with search appearance, search traffic, Google index, and so forth. And uh, the crawl errors is something which I've already shown to you underneath crawl. That was part of the dashboard also. So there were certain, very few, five, uh, a total eight errors were there. And that was to do with the server connectivity issue and so forth, which is usually not a role of a digital marketer. It is the, uh, the developer has to really get them corrected. You as a digital marketer will let the developer know about it. You can go to the crawl stats and see how, uh, you know, how much pages have been crawled per day and so forth. So if we talk about last 90 days, the number of pages which have been crawled the least have been 25 in the last 90 days. And the maximum number of pages which have been crawled in a single day has been 533, which is somewhere over here in the month of, I believe, December 2016. On, and on an average, 128 pages are you know, crawled on daily basis, and that's the average. Now, this is with regards to the time also spent, the kilobytes of uh, data which is being downloaded. Again, this again guys is a data which is to be kept tracked on on regular basis and one has to see that there should not be any downward trend it either should be maintained or an upward trend guys all right now this is another thing fetch as google being another one if you want certain page if you want certain page of your website to be crawled right then and there you can put in across the url over here and Google will render the page or crawl the page. If you want certain, let's say if you have created, this is used across in a scenario when you have created a new page and uh, you enter across the URL of that new page and then you click on to fetch and render. Robots.txt tester is another functionality which helps you to know whether the robots.txt is present or not, whether it has got any uh, error or not. So it shows that on 12th of Feb 2017, uh, you know, the robots.txt was being edited and so forth. And uh, here is the overall, here is the overall uh, command, the robots.txt, I mean, how it looks like and so forth. Plus, if, uh, if you want to check if there is a particular URL which is being blocked by robots.txt or not, you can enter the URL and then just check whether it's been blocked or it's not. Then comes in the next option, guys, which is sitemap. Sitemap, as you're all aware, it is all to do with getting across uh, the search engine know that which all web pages are part of your website and what's the hierarchy like. So over here, these all numbers have been submitted and these all have been indexed. So 164 have been submitted and 124 have been indexed and there are certain issues because of which not every page has been 
index. So let's go ahead and click onto the 147 warnings. All right. So the URL are not accepted. URLs rebooted out, unreachable. URL being blocked by robots.txt are these ones. So ones can go ahead and look at all of them together. All right, it says 147 warnings also. All right, so I do not see 147. Okay, 144 is right over here. So there are sitemap contains URLs which are blocked by robots.txt. All right, so one can go ahead and download all of this again. And this needs to be corrected again. All right, so we'll get that done later on. So this cannot be downloaded. This has to be picked up right from here itself. All right, so this has to be, this is, this is not the entire list which is being given over here. Errors, nothing, all. Right, so it's not giving across the entire set of URLs. So just because of all that, there are certain pages it's saying which have been part of the sitemap, but they are being blocked by robots.txt, which is not appropriate. So you know what happens with sitemap, if you've got certain URL, it means that you're looking for those pages to be crawled and indexed. But on the other hand, you are going ahead and putting certain pages in the uh, robots.txt, which you are not looking to get crawled and indexed. So there is a controversy basically. I mean, there is, on one hand, you want that to be part of the search engine results and those same pages. On the other hand, you're stopping them from robots.txt. So you have to really decide on one part and so forth, okay? So again, that for this particular purpose, you have to connect with your developer and get this fixed, and you have to decide which all pages to be crawled and index and which one not to be. Okay, this is to do with configuring URL. So that's something which we did with the help of web, uh, WordPress. We're not gonna come out of that. Security issues, if your website has got certain security issues, guys, it's got a malware, which is a virus, or it's been hacked and so forth. Currently, it says your website, we haven't detected any security issues with your site content, and it's all working well. If in case your website get hacked, then the security issue is the option where you go ahead and uh, try to seek in help or assistance from the web, from Google itself. All right, and then there are other resources. Other Within the other resource, I'll just like to showcase Google My Business, we'll talk about, and also Google Merchant Center is part of the paid one. And so there are various things, but Webmaster Academy helps you to learn across various things related to Google Webmaster. And the other thing which I'll show you is page speed. All right, so we'll take our 10, 15 minutes break, guys, and then we'll work on to Google Business and, my, and page speed, which would be the last two things for today. And then we'll, con we'll start tomorrow with the paid version or if there would be, right? So there are certain tools also which we we'll, uh, might be able to see tomorrow. All right, so we'll take across a 10, 15 minutes break and uh, we'll meet after the break, guys. Make sense? Are we all good? Can I get a quick confirmation for everyone? All right, thanks, Koresh, for replying in. Can I get to know from other Prasenjit and Vijay? Are you guys doing good? Thanks, Koresh, and thanks, Vijay. So we'll meet after 15 minutes, guys. I'm just putting myself on the mute.
All right, so let's get started after break, guys. Just trying to check if you guys can hear me. All right, so you guys can hear me perfect. All right, thanks, Prasanji, then Vijay for acknowledging. Let's move further, guys. The next thing which I wanted to show you was Google Page Insights. Now, this is a great tool, guys. Okay, now Page Insights, the Page Speed tool has moved to this URL right over here. Just going to make it part of the document as well. Give me a second. All right, so what we need to do in order to get across an understanding whether the website is mobile friendly or not, Google has offered this tool. I've shared the URL right in front of, I mean, in the chat window too. It's a simple tool. What we are doing right now, we are typing in across the URL of the website and then clicking on do run test. All right, so it's fetching across the data. It's doing its test. Let's wait for it till the time it's done. Any questions you guys have, feel free to put that across in the chat window. I'm going back to the same tool. Oh, all right, just a sec. Which is page speed insights. Here as well, we can go ahead and check the page speed. So one was the mobile friendly page. So we are running both of them. Let's see what's gonna be the result like. Okay, now here you can see with the very first stuff which we did guys, we have been, I mean, we wanted to see whether the website is mobile friendly or not. It says this page is easy to use on a mobile device and so forth. We can go ahead and click on to submit to Google. All right, it says page added to indexing queue. Submitting a page multiple times will not change its queue position or got to priority. So, you know, when such kind of stuff is being done, that you have done something uh, related to your, what do you call, SEO stuff. I mean, you, you've done something related to your search engine optimization activity, you can absolutely go ahead and share this kind of a stuff with your client in these kind of scenarios. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm show, showing it, I'm sharing it with my client. It's absolutely important to share it with the client so that client should know that yes, uh, these are the hard work, these are the activities which the, which the SEO provider is doing. All right, so time to share that across with the client that's been done and moving ahead with by sending it across. That's it. So page is mobile friendly. That's the only thing which we wanted to know from this particular tool. Now the other one guys is with is to do with the overall speed, the speed at which the page opens up. All right, so there is the speed stuff guys, it's it's being informed by page speed tools. On a scale of 100, it's only 33, which is absolutely not a great speed, 
this should be improved across when i check for desktop for desktop it's 36 all right there are certain things which needs to be optimized across in order to improve the page speed now page speed if we talk about it, it's a speed it's a pace at which the web page gets downloaded the moment it's being typed across in the browser all right the moment it's being typed across in the browser the 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 time which is being taken across by the web page to open up that's what page speed is usually the the score goes down when you have used across pretty heavy images or files and other stuff onto your web page then this lower score comes in across okay uh, if we talk about various different things over here like uh, you know images optimization is needed across compression of files is needed across minifying javascript and leverage browser caching these are the things which needs to be fixed upon now i won't really get into the nitty gritties of these but this is to be shown across this is to, this is to be shared across with the developer again whether the development work is getting done by you so you need to show it shared with the developer which is with you or if it's there with the client's end the, there's so it, this always is clear within your client and you whose responsibility is it to look after the development so in my particular example which i'm taking right now it's the responsibility of the client to really fix uh these are the web developer i'm saying to my client to fix the page speed issues refer to the url mentioned below all right now what is to be done the developer will look into all of these things that the javascript has to be minified the optim images have to be optimized and so forth so that the file size which is a, at a problem that should be taken care of all right like i'm saying the these development related tasks are not the responsibility of the digital marketing person guys all in all you need to be responsible for things like you know keeping in shape the on page off page looking at various different uh, errors and so forth which are there and then taking actions actions which you take in order to put across things into right place uh, have to be decided whether it's a development related task or a task which is to be done by the digital marketer all right so that's to do with the page speed part guys and the next element which i want to showcase already that's to do with the google business okay now in order to optimize your uh what do you say website further you can get across a backlink from google business also google my business helps you to get across let me just create across a new business account what do you need to do you need to just create across you need to just go to business.google.com and then type in across let's say i'm typing in a test account over here a test google business just to showcase across what exactly is needed this is used only guys by those businesses which have a physical location virtual businesses are not allowed this is a new guideline which has been provided which has come across by google that virtual businesses cannot have their listing on google maps okay now i've got this up once i've got this account created i can go ahead and uh, click on to manage now right over here i can either go ahead and uh, okay this is the option we should go with add a single location so i've clicked on to add a single location all my business details would be punched in over here things related to the business name the address the phone number the services the timings of the business and so forth all these details needs to be punched in within this particular stuff which is google business the business name i'm repeating again the country the street address city pin code main business phone number category and so forth once you will click on to continue after you've done all this all right google will say that we will send across a verification code into your postal mailbox okay you have to take that verification code which you will receive on your address there would be a post mailer there would be post mailer which you will receive you have to open that post mailer look into that uh, entire 
verification code and then log in again back to your Google business and put in across and your, your business would be right there onto Google Maps. If somebody will type in across your business name in Google Maps, automatically the uh, you know directions and so forth would be guided across. Your, your business altogether, it's getting into Google Maps, that's number one, plus it will be ranking across in the Maps listing as well. So that's another benefit, guys. Hope it makes sense. Let me know in case you have any questions, guys. So this is the last thing for today. Rest, we'll start with the paid element in the next session, which is going to be tomorrow, guys. Same time. The paid elements, I cannot start right now because it'll take a good amount of time to actually take this further and so forth. Whatever questions or queries you have before we wrap up our session for today, please feel, to, feel free to put that across, type in across in the chat window, please. Are you guys doing good? Let me know, Goresh, Prasenjit, Vijay, are you guys good? Or you have a question? Mm -hmm. Would like to know from each one of you. Anything which you want to ask? You got any suggestions? You got, uh, you got any pointers to talk about? Please do post that across in the chat window so that I can take it further. Okay, I'll wait. I believe you guys might be typing in. All right, so Vijay, Prasanjit, Goresh, are you guys good? Is the chat working or not? All right, person, you need to practice fast and absolutely, the practice is absolutely needed. I would request you to go ahead and follow these same uh, activities, which is to do with uh, starting from keyword analysis, creating across the tags, keyword mapping, entire on-page, off-page, which we have spoken about. Absolutely. You have to go to all these tools. You have to go to the webmaster, look into all of these and this. Uh, Goresh, when will you be getting the, okay, so are you in touch with Nitin Goresh? Uh, so are you in touch, if you are in touch with Nitin, Nitin is going to be the right person who will give you all the details. So, okay, you've got, you've received a mail with the login details. Oh, okay, after third session. So today was the third session, so hopefully you should get that after the third session then. So today it was the third session. Righty. Makes sense, guys. Any other question you have, feel free to put that across. Vijay, uh, I know it was your first session, so there were a few things which were being, not few things, everything was actually talked about search engine optimization today, and there was a lot of uh, continuation. I mean, there were a lot of things which I have, been saying that this is what we covered in our previous session. This is what we covered in a previous session. I kept on saying this. So in order to be on the same page, Vijay, uh, Nitin will give you across the URL, or the recording URLs, the recordings of the previous two sessions. And then once you look into the recordings, come up with your questions and let me know uh, if I can help you, if I can be of any help to you in any of those things. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you, Vijay. Thanks, Prasenjit, and thanks, Koresh. Uh, I hope, all right, you've received, perfect. All right, thanks, Koresh, thanks, Vijay, and thank you, Prasenjit, for being part of the session today. We'll be meeting across tomorrow, same time, and we'll take it further from there, guys. Thanks, and take care, and have a great rest of the day. Thanks, take care, bye-bye. Uh, well, recordings would be shared across this time from now onwards from, by Nitin. So just wanted to let you know, guys. All right. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.